Welcome to the Chaos Common Metrics Meeting for June 9th, 2022. We have, let's see, we have some things already on the agenda, which looks good. Um, so the action items from the previous meeting were, they're all here in the agenda. So Kevin was gonna bring a few metrics back to the team. I believe I, um, I think I did um, one. So we can talk about it during the agenda item. You don't need to. Oh, okay. Um, oh, thank you for doing that, Elizabeth. I'm working, at, I'm actually working in the Pivotal office, well, the VMware office. So the, wow. I'm working on a small screen on my laptop because wow. I'm in a, I'm basically in a, I'm in a box here. I'll show you. I'm in a, I'm in a box with um, the worst lighting ever for video. So I just wow, that is, that is, you look it's like, just like you're in a... There's one light right on top of my head and that's it. And there's it, no, there's no place to move to get any kind of light. So you can't looks see like, me anyways. It looks so. like an interrogation <laughs> cell from a yeah. cop show. You need to, do you need it someone does. to come down there with bail money? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe. This is the only place we're allowed to take phone calls. So this is where I am. Oh. Uh, <laughs> it does look like interrogation. It's... It does. So I'm basically in an interrogation chamber. Um, okay, so Kevin was gonna bring the back, those back to the team. So we'll talk about those in a minute. Um, we probably don't have Benod yet because he's always a few minutes late to the meeting um, because of buses. So we'll, we'll cover his action items. Um, Kevin uh, Goggins. That agenda item. Who typed Kevin Goggins? Kevin Lombard? <laughs> I didn't. Not me. Okay, because <laughs> there was a Kevin Goggins. <laughs> oh, Sean did the letters and then just ignored the letters. I see yeah. Yeah, I did. I, I was just, I just do that. <laughs> um, but yeah, whoever put Kevin Goggins there, you might want to know he's my late brother. <laughs> oh. Oops. Yeah, it's fine. <laughs> it was like, Kevin? What? Hello? Okay, so... Uh, Kevin. Stop. New new PRs and issues. Um, it says there's, there's nothing new, but I thought I remembered seeing one. <laughs> that nothing new might be a copy-paste from yeah. last, last week. Fiend Goggins, um, nice, nice. <laughs> Uh, oh, because Kevin Kevin put an issue, which is the metrics revision, the types of contributions. But I think we'll get to that in just a minute when we talk about reviewing the old metrics. Um, okay, so um, Kevin, do you wanna do you wanna just talk about that? Uh, the the metric. Uh, yeah. Yep, so I went through uh, the types of contributions metric. Uh, and it was a, I believe this one is a relatively new one. Uh, so there, there weren't a ton of issues. Uh, however, let me see. Sorry, let me, maybe let's pull the metric up. uh so so types of contributions is the metric uh i went through and i identified five issues that need to be fixed uh the two simplest ones were probably just the general update the template uh and add the revision date to it i think all the metrics that we that we revise are going to have that uh in the collect trace data section. Uh, yep, that one there. Uh, I think we need to link out to metrics that have been defined. So there's no there's no connection currently to metrics that that we have defined. Uh, however, there are metrics probably related to types of contributors uh, that we should connect to this. 
Are you uh, saying like code contributions should be linked out or something like that? Like, what do you? Yes. Yeah. Exactly. Okay. Yeah. If it's if it's a metric, so if we're saying collect trace data measuring contributions, then in this in this section we should link to any metrics that we've defined uh, that are about that, right? So yeah, I think that's a good idea, and I I think in general we should use examples of metrics we have already created. So. Um, and linking to those, I think is the right, right way to go. Good idea. Uh, and then the uh, in the I'm going backwards, I suppose. So then we go to the top of the page. Uh, we do need to we need to add. So there is a there's kind of an implicit DEI objective in here, uh, but I think we need to actually add an explicit DEI objective uh, per the. Uh, the our metrics release uh, checklist asks asks to consider a uh, an explicit uh, DEI objective, uh, and then the uh, the oh, just sorry to comment on that. Yes. So um, agreed, particularly because this metric has come up as one that we would like to use in project badging is how we recognize the different types of contributions or how a project recognizes the different types of contributions. So that'd be a good, it seems like a very sensible statement to add. Okay, yeah, so so basically the, the top two bullet points are asking for uh, more explicit information in the description and more explicit information in the objectives. Uh, so one of the one of the kind of reoccurring issues that I see in the uh, in metrics is that the description will have kind of statements like multiple varied contributions make an open source project healthy. Uh, that may be true, but that's not a description of what we're measuring. That sentence may fit better as the first sentence in objectives. Uh, and the description should explicitly talk about what this metric is and what it measures. Uh, so, so I'd like the description to be a little more explicit and, and, and talk very specifically about what types of contribute, what the definition of types of contribution is and what we're measuring. Uh, so I think I recommend taking that first sentence out, just moving it to objectives, and then just making the objectives more explicit uh, and adding the DEI objective and, and and adding a sentence or two in the description that 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 really outlines, hey, like this is what types of contributions is measuring. Sounds good. Uh, but but otherwise, the, it's it's a fairly well written metric, and uh, I didn't see too many issues. Uh, I do think there's a there is a. Uh, a fair amount of work on this one, so I know uh, the the process of revising these. We often assign them to someone, uh, but the the amount of work on this one, we might consider pulling it into a Google Doc and just working on it together. Uh, I don't think we I don't think we we'd be changing the uh, the meaning of the metric at all. So I don't think we need to send this to. Uh, uh back into the review process uh but it but it might benefit from kind of a shared editing i mean nothing that you have proposed seems is it mostly just around the objectives and the description uh yeah and, and adding the yeah objectives and description and then adding the links to the other metrics and then basically just uh updating the template so those are the I mean, your call, I, could you like maybe make your proposed changes on that doc? You know what I mean? If that's the easier way to take feedback on it. Well, that's the, that's the, the easiest way, I suppose, would be for me to do it. Because <laughs> then, I don't, well, have to, way for then I don't have to explain it to uh, everyone. Well, well, that's what us. I had done in DEI, that's all. Like okay. if I needed to change the objective a little bit or like kind of what you're talking about like with objectives and descriptions i had the same same things you know like just kind of nudge it oh yeah i, I can take yeah. that as an action item
Okay, so I'm going to add an action item and the link to this one in the notes. Anything else on that one? Okay. Um, do we have the notes yet? No. Um, let's skip time waiting for a review or action for now. We can go down to do um, the metrics, focus groups, metrics models, et cetera. Um, I don't know, Matt, Kevin, do you want to talk more about that one? I'm, I'm never sure. I'm never sure how to respond to that question. <laughs> Sorry, it's on the agenda. So I assume someone put it on the agenda. It might be just a copy and paste from last week's agenda, which it looks like it was. Um, is this is this something we need to talk about? Because you were working on better defining those terms and trying to clear up the confusion. <clears throat> Uh, if it's if it's something that people want to talk about, we could we could maybe look at those definitions and get feedback on the definitions. Yeah, Kevin, do you have that handy? You're on, I know you're in front of a computer. Uh, yes. Okay, so uh, you think I should just share the screen or? Yeah, probably. So that's probably easier. Okay. Elizabeth, you have to stop sharing. Okay, so this is uh, so the definitions are still in kind of a preliminary stage. Uh, I've been writing stuff down, and Matt has been commenting on <laughs> them. Uh, but I recommend, or I uh, uh, I would love to hear feedback or see if some of these my definitions. Uh, fit with the way you all think about them. So uh, starting at the- uh, Can you put the link? Can you put the link in the chat? Yeah. Just cause then people could maybe make comments. Okay. Sorry. And I suppose I better share this as well. Um, could you grant access on that, Kevin? I'm I'm changing those permissions right now. So. Okay, thank you. Okay, you should have access now. Thank you. Yeah. So. Specifically, what I'm asking for is feedback on these terms that I've identified here. And I've got, we've got nine terms, uh, and maybe. You want to uh, share your screen too? Yes, I'll do that again. And I added the link to the notes, so we'd have it later. Okay. Oop. Okay. So we've got nine terms that that I've that I've kind of identified and. Uh, uh, part of this is because I'm trying to understand how metrics and models are related to each other and how work is being done in chaos and how we can have kind of a shared understanding of what these terms mean uh, as we're doing the work, but also uh, how we can create dynamic ways for users to explore our metrics and models. Uh, so in order, in order to do that, I, I think we have to have clear definitions of what these terms are. Uh, so I just kind of jumped through these uh, working group, focus area, metric, composite metric, metric model, implementation, initiative, and filter are all terms that uh, have come up before. I've got tag on here as well. 
uh, but I think you can kind of ignore tag for a while. I'm going. That's uh, uh, that's what we'll what I what I'm proposing we use for uh, the website knowledge base and kind of the that dynamic presentation of uh, metrics and models to users. Uh, I have a quick question yes. on older metrics. We had the section of parameters. Should we like if we see that, should we just take that out and move them all to filters or some some metrics, I think, had both parameters and filters. But it sounds like we want to move away from that additional. Descriptor. I've always kind of thought of parameters and filters as the same thing, but maybe Maybe Sean has a more uh, oh, mature God. view of it. I doubt it. We've been through this uh, so many times. I don't even want to head down this road. Um, we, we only have one of them in the template now, and I think that's because we've often been confused about what the difference is. So, so that would be a great time to define it if we need to. Otherwise, if it's not something we need in a metric, then then oh. maybe we. I think our practice demonstrates it's we just need one. And then the things that are one can become the other. I mean, they're not you know, parameters and filters are not very clearly distinct. Uh -huh. So if I see that it's some of those older evolution metrics, I will make sure that we recommend to take those out. Okay. Awesome. Move them, I mean, probably move them around is what we'll do. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Move them to filters. yeah. <clears throat> I think that these um, definitions, there's a question of what is the uh, intended audience? So, for example, um, if the intended audience is people on the website who are new members of the chaos community trying to figure out what the, the difference is between a focus area and a working group, for example, um, that implies one way of approaching this task. And if the intended audience is um, the um, chaos kind of governing board, then that's another. So the the intended audience is the chaos working groups. Hmm. Uh, this is this is about having shared definitions for the the work that we're doing and the 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 way that we're working. So this is not uh, this is not really for the user. This is so that we can have so that we understand what a focus area is across working groups when we're defining focus areas or when we're building metrics within focus areas so that we understand what we're building when we define a metric versus a model. Uh, so the, the intended, the intended uh, target audience for this is the people doing the work in chaos. Thank you. I wonder um, uh, maybe maybe it would be um, good to add a line on that header on the first page um, defining target audience. I'll say um, I, I find this very useful. <laughs> I, have, I have many times been confused about the difference between a working group and a focus area. The parameters conversation. Well, what is a filter? Uh, I think I can retroactively understand some uh, cryptic Matt German play comments <laughs> a little bit better. So, and I do, I do want to make clear that a lot of these these comments and things that are written written down here. This is how this is my interpretation of them and kind of my musings on them. Uh, I don't know if this is the same way that other people define them. So this is this is really a, a great opportunity for you to say, hey, I don't think I don't think your definition of metric is uh, good enough. This is what I think a metric is. Uh, it's a it's a good place to to talk about uh, what a metric model is, uh, what a composite I metric is. Wonder, I also wonder if there might be some visualization that would help people think about this too, because the way the way I the way I kind of look at this is, you know, you've got you've got a metric, uh, or you've got a working group. A working group has one or more focus areas. 
the focus areas have, you know, one or more metrics. Composite metrics have multiple metrics. Metrics models have multiple metrics and or composite metrics. I'm not sure how to do that, but I'm, I'm wondering if that might help people visualize some of it. Uh, I mean, sort of visualizations out, like, for the individual things or visualizations no. for the relationship between those things? I was thinking the relationships between the things. Yeah, okay. So that's what this would be or that I'm working on. Oh, okay, uh, perfect. Sorry, I hadn't seen that yet. And to be clear, this is a visualization of how work is done. And this is also a proposal for how we define focus areas. So the idea, the idea here is that the, the working groups are these, these volunteer associations of people who have come together to work identifying metrics and models that measure some sort of similar phenomena, right? Uh, and then focus areas would be descriptive context areas, kind of similar to the way Common does it now, where we have place, people, uh, time, Things of that nature. So my, my proposal is that we take these focus areas and make them common across all working groups. So perhaps there are uh, 10 or 12 focus areas that the working groups can agree are kind of relevant across working groups. And then perhaps our, our, our metrics, our models can, can fit within those, those, uh, those focus areas. Uh, the, and the, the kind of the, the difference between the way we're doing it now is that right now a focus area can either describe a context area or it can describe a measurable phenomena. And when it describes a measurable phenomena, it's basically a model, right? So there's, so we, 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 we end up having a little bit of that confusion between what's a model and what's a focus area or, uh, and then additionally, the focus areas aren't, uh, they're different across working groups. So we don't have a kind of a, a shared way of understanding the relationships between metrics and models across working groups. And then I see hands are up, so I will be quiet. Uh, Matt or Don? I'll go. Um, so this is <clears throat> kind of to Lucas's question earlier, kind of the audience for this. So part is that slide number two, which is like defining the terms, you know, like all the metric and metric model and all that kind of stuff. I, I, I mean, I agree with Kevin. This is about um, kind of defining the things that we use sometimes pretty loosely within our working groups. And then the second, the second is really about, um, if we can get some standardization on that that second slide, it's really about thinking about it's really about how the metrics or the metrics models can be best used or consumed by other people. So if we can standardize the way that we work, that'll help the delivery of information collectively from chaos down the road. So there are kind of two audiences here <laughs> by like structuring our work and clarifying our terms, I think there's a positive downstream effect that can come from this, which is how we present the material to other people. So Don, I'm done. Yeah, so I had I had a couple of questions. Where does app ecosystem fit into all of this? That's my first question. Uh, Good so question. I would probably put them in the <clears throat> in the vertical that I've created here that is that is models currently. Mm -hmm. uh, and I've asterisked it and it's models working groups, initiatives, and app ecosystem working group. So, oh there I see. So I've kind of okay. I've kind of put them here, right? So they they kind of generally are interested in models. Uh, they're not doing they're not doing the, the same explicit work that the models working group is. Uh, but I think the I think that there is kind of that general vertical for them still. And I assume that by by initiatives we 
so I was just looking at kind of our overview presentation and it talked about programs. It talked about badging. It talked about um, models and it talked about something else. So I assume we're just renaming programs to initiatives, which actually makes a lot of sense to me. Uh, yes, okay. but that is but that is also a term that we need to define. <laughs> okay. uh, my understanding it, of it currently is these are the ways these are the, the initiatives are the uh, these uh, either the software or badging things where we have actually taken models and you know putting putting them put them to work right it's an actual for chaos these are actual products that people can use uh, and, and it's maybe a little bit different from an implementation in the working model in the models working group because an implementation in the working models group is this very specific thing it's a it's a Jupyter notebook and it's maybe a proof of concept for the metrics model uh, that offers a potential utility for users but it's not a kind of finished product the same way that uh, that an initiative is. And maybe maybe Sean disagrees with that. I don't know. I mean, I think I think that these things become real as we do them. So but I'm also I'm also not sure that the software uh, implementations belong under belong under initiatives. Um, it, yeah, could was, be a, it could again, be another I'm term. Go back to yeah. the, I'm just going to go back to the, uh, the chaos overview presentation that I was just looking at recently, which talked about software and metrics, and then it talked about programs, which talked about initiatives. Um, they, could be, they could be their own thing. Uh, it's I, uh, I tend to think of them as their own thing because they, they are the things that sort of combine, that, that use all of these, all of these things. Like I feel like I feel like the software programs themselves, uh, the software um, projects are maybe kind of out of scope for the for the definitions because all the rest of these definitions are specifically about individual kind of metrics, ways of working. Yeah, I mean, I, maybe I, I'm I'd be I'd be I mean, perfectly, I'd be perfectly fine deleting that. I think out. I think you could put them under a category called software. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but does that does that need to be defined? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> it's part of our project. Okay. Then. I mean, chaos software, I guess. I mean, explaining what it is and defining it, like, huh? it's just like a miracle occurs if we don't do a little conceptual explanation of what Grimoire Lab and Augur do. Okay. How about, how about you can can You can tag me with uh, putting together draft definitions of that, and they would each have their own thing. Oh, yeah. Something like that, except yeah. with another like line. That. Yeah, I like that better. Yep. Okay. The only other thing I might suggest is if we're going to provide definitions, we present them alphabetically. Yeah, that's that's fine. That's well. Yeah, I did like the. I had put them three, four five, six, like there is some linear order to me for that, like metric to metric model. To no, I just, I just put them in as I thought of them here. So yeah, yeah. No, happy, to, had, happy to sort them however you'd like. I had moved metric up just because yeah. it was below oh. metric model. And I just thought from a reading perspective, Oh, gotcha. I wanted yeah. to know what the atomic thing was first before we yeah. talked about using them. Yeah. And I suppose yeah, after metric model, I might put chaos software in there and push implementation underneath chaos software. Yeah, yeah the, the reason because it's I mean that there's a cycle there. It's those are implementation is not independent of chaos software. Uh, I thought that the implementations are these are the metrics model implementations. That's right. But they're not independent of chaos software. We use chaos software to assemble them. Oh, you do? Yeah. Yeah, like the ones that uh, Yahui did are all with Drew Gamore Lab. Um, the ones that obviously Regala and I did are through Augur. I thought those were just all Jupyter Notebook uh, implementations. That's a, there's a magic part in there where the data gets created, but the data was created by either Gamore Lab or Augur. Oh, so, so you're, you're pulling the so data from... Yes. Yeah, they're part of the cycle. They're part of the implementation. 
Yeah, absolutely. Uh, you can't do the implementation notebooks without one of those software packages. I was, I was just, I was assuming the like pulling the data using like a GraphQL API or something like that. Nope. Why do that when we've already defined how to do that in the software? Okay, so it sounds like there could be some ordering things to think about. And editing and yeah. editing of these definitions. Right? Yeah. So once again, this is just, this is how I think about them. And it's not necessarily, it's, it's probably not the same way as Sean thinks about these terms. It's not the same way uh, Don thinks about them. It's not the same way oh. Lucas thinks about them. So could, could we go to slide three then? Yes. So what are people see that the middle one where it says possible examples, governance, project, community, people, software, like that kind of stuff. And what are people's thoughts on? So the, the proposal is, is that each working group would use any number of these focus area names. So a working group could use five of these focus areas. A working group could use three. They could use all eight or whatever it might be. So it's not that every working group has to use all of them. But standardizing how working groups have their focus areas named on one of these things. And the, the logic, and it's kind of a two part. And then the, the advantage of doing this is that if we have people searching for metrics or metrics models around software, those metrics and metrics models can be kind of tagged that way. Or if they're searching for metrics and metrics models around governance, they can be tagged that way, kind of irrespective of what working group they come from. So that's the that's that downstream thing. This is how I'm understanding it. That's correct. And then we can we can also so we can we can tag by context, and then we can tag by phenomena, and that allows us to cross the matrix rather than having just the the verticals and horizontals, right? It basically allows the user to dynamically create their own organizations and categorizations of metrics. And this this then ties into the knowledge base with the kind of the way that it is going to be structured that we allow for these metrics and metrics models to be searchable. And that searchability would be based on tagging and the tagging is based on this unified naming on the focus areas. I have a quick question. What would be the difference between project and software in your, or is that not, we don't know yet? Oh, with the, the possible examples, I, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't know. Uh, it's, it's however we decided to define it, right? So project could be the, project could be inclusive of the like governance, uh, software could be related to the artifact. Uh, we, we could choose to not use either of those terms or use one or the other. Uh, I don't know that they were just, uh, okay. Just example context areas. So okay. one of the, one of the context areas that the metrics model working group wants to use is ecosystem which describes a large context area. Uh, so if we, if we were to use ecosystem, then we probably also need to have focus areas that are, that describe it at different levels, for example, project or, uh, yeah. So, but I think the, like figuring out what these focus areas are is a, it's a little bit of a task because it, uh, we want to be, uh, we want to encompass, you know, all the possible focus areas that could come up at a manageable level, right? Yeah, that makes sense. The one thing that I find confusing on this on this graph is the models column, because we have models in like each of the focus areas, and because you've combined multiple things into the the models, like the you know the initiatives app app ecosystem. Um, I'm having a hard time understanding how that visualization works. I find it, I find it uh, so this is 
this this visualization would be a it's a visualization of how the work would be done. So the reason that a model would belong to a focus area and a vertical working group is purely because that working group is the one that did the work on the model and put it into that that focus area. Right. So the a model can have multiple metrics in it, and those metrics can come from different uh, focus areas, and they can come from different working groups. However, this association that we're seeing is purely based on where the work is done. So models exist, models would exist in this value vertical or common vertical and focus area because the, the working group did the work and chose to organize it by that focus area. Would it make sense, Don, to like how we have common DEI evolution value risk to have like put the app ecosystem working group there? You know, as a vertical that, by itself. Is the app ecosystem working group, is that still like are they still doing stuff? Yeah, I think so. Okay. I don't know. I don't okay. think they I don't think they create metrics or models though. I think they just talk about them. They're just uh they're only included in this as they they have the potential to do this. So they're they're included here. Yeah, I mean, I think it makes sense to include the models kind of, you know, as you have them there on the rows within the focus areas, that to me makes sense. But then this models, this models column doesn't look to me like the models working group um, work. And I think I'm, maybe I'm just misinterpreting it. But, you know, it talks about like, I feel like this column is trying to do too many things at once, I think maybe is my is my feedback. Because okay. you've got event badging in there, you've got initiatives. Um, because and... I get like the models and implementations, because that's what the, the models working group does. But uh -huh. it feels like like I'm not sure how the event badging fits in there. Yeah. So the the reason I included it like that was because those uh because the the people that do the work on those projects are separate entities. So the models, mm -hmm. the models working group is a is an entity that does the work. So any models that they would have would be uh, would would land in the in that vertical and in that and in the horizontal. Uh, and the same thing with so initiatives in this case, when I put initiatives in, I'm very I'm very specifically talking about event badging. Uh, and event badging is based on well, actually, it's the other way around. There's an event badging model that's going to be based on event badging. Uh, I could leave initiatives out altogether, if that uh, if that made sense. Uh, and at that at that point, the verticals would just be working groups. We could add the, the models working group or the app ecosystem working group into it, uh, and just leave initiatives off this organization chart. Is that the top purple bar? No, no, it's the vertical. Oh. It's the it's this bit here that she's talking about, what? I believe, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. So why don't we maybe I was gonna say maybe we could try to sort that out a little bit, Kevin, and like bring it back. You know what I mean? Yes. So what I what I would do is I would probably change this to uh, I'm sorry. Uh, you have that thing in your way. Yeah. Right. So let's just call this the the models working group. Or or actually, we'll get so we we don't put working group elsewhere. So we know that's just the models working group. We get rid of initiatives. Uh, actually, I can get rid of this all together. So I could add an, and then if I were to add another vertical in or two more verticals in, I could add one for initiatives if that makes sense, or I could add one for. Uh,
Yeah, I like that. So each each working group or place that would have work would have would have its own vertical. And then the question becomes, do we need to give initiatives its own vertical? Or do we just want to leave the initiatives out of this the same way that we leave software out of this? My first thought is to leave it out. And then I don't know, there could be like a slide in between this and number four. That's like all this can be brought together or is powered by, you know, yeah. software and we have initiatives that come I out mean, of these. Well, the other thing you could do is, you know, where you've got the, the box uh, or the line under measurable phenomena, uh, uh -huh. phenomena. Um, I think we could put like a box right above that, but just like just that area that says like software and initiatives. Because those feel like they cut across all of the all of the different working groups, but they're not they're not focus areas. So like a different color and maybe smaller, just over, you know, mm -hmm. kind of scoped to the measurable phenomena section. Yeah, I think similarly to the knowledge base, the the software the software is going to it's the it's like the forty five degree angle across the matrix, right? It connects everything together. So the, the knowledge base and the software are those, 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 not the vertical or the horizontals. It's the those forty-five degree connections between, uh, which we yeah. which we don't want to visualize because it would really overly complicate everything. Uh, but it's the way that it's the way that we connect everything together, right? Uh, from a from a user standpoint. Well, I like Don's suggestion of down there adding a button. Yeah. Where we're at, um, just down like in that area where you're at right now, just for the time being, just add a text box. I mean, I can do it too. That's like, uh, see, oh yeah, there. I could. I guess I could do it. I could show you. <laughs> I'm looking right at it. Yeah, show. Yeah, show me. Show me what you're thinking. <laughs> do you want me to do it? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Let me find the presentation. Um, because what I was thinking, uh, oh, I can only view it. Oh, yeah, sorry. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I might be in the wrong account. No, I, I, I didn't have the permission set correctly. It's all good now. I was sharing. You should be able to edit now. Okay. Um, because what I was thinking was that we could add a little. And then you can fix it later because I'm not very good at this. Like this. To show that it covers like all of these, you know, across the measurable phenomenon, across the working groups, we have software and initiatives that kind of cut across everything. But it's different than like the focus area boxes. You see what I mean? Yes. Yep. And I and I think you could add now the knowledge base to that line as well. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, okay. You can make it pretty later. <laughs> it's pretty good, actually. <laughs> it's a good job, Don. Yeah, it looks good. I don't know that I will default change it. Default color, that, uh... default font. <laughs> uh. Thank you so much for all your work on this, Kevin. This is looking really good. Is it making? And I know is this, it is, I know this is really hard. I find that um, this is valuable in um, showing the relationships between things and putting together the pictures. One thing that I still find um, confusing is the um, different use of the term models uh, on the uh, sixth vertical axis versus on the horizontal axis. So returning to the uh, to the diagram, there's the models working group, and then there's the concept of a model that uh, is uh, an artifact inside of a single working. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, yeah. So the uh, yeah, the, so metrics and models are the the artifacts. Those are the things we create. 
uh, the verticals are the, the working groups or the, the associations of people that create the artifacts, mm -hmm. right? So the uh, models aren't just, they, they aren't just built by the models working group. Models can be built by any of the working groups. Uh, as, a matter, and as a matter of fact, uh, most of the working groups uh, probably have some models they've already created uh, that are kind of that are currently kind of listed as as metrics. Yeah, um, you you, um, you called the models WG models WG earlier. Yeah, uh, would that be helpful if I just if I did that? I think that, that that definitely works for me. I'm not sure if it's clutter for other people, but for me, it's uh, helpful. Yeah, that's good. And I, I could add that to these as well, or or I could put a. Uh, we we are at time, by the way. Just one, as we wrap up here, just one scheduling note. Um, we're taking the last two weeks of June kind of off from a meeting perspective. There's OSSNA coming up and then it kind of leads us into the 4th of July weekend. And so there won't be a meeting for common in two weeks. Cool, that sounds good. I'll be, well, I'll see a bunch of you at OSSNA. Which is exciting. Yep. So I would uh, repeat the the call for if anyone wants to help edit this or share their thoughts on the definitions, uh, that would be incredibly helpful. Uh, and then regarding the uh, this this slide here, uh, if this is if this is the if this organization makes sense, if this image makes sense. We do need to start thinking about what focus areas could exist across working groups. Uh, and maybe common is the best place to figure that out. I don't know. Yeah, I think it would certainly help in common working group. Yep. Well, thanks, Kevin. Thank yeah, you. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks, so, Kevin. As you mentioned, we are, we are out of time. Uh, the next meeting will be in about a month. Um, so, so thank you everybody and I hope to see some of you at OSSNA. Awesome. Bye everybody. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Everybody. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Bye.